Thinking with my Mac D. You see, we different in the way we move. You move with kittens and your dog. I move with bears and bulls. I got a green thought. Grow with the marijuana. Waking up with the fun. Oh, some commas. Jump out of bed, make profits. Eat my bacon and eggs, make profits. Light up, watching them candy, make profits. While I'm still in my sand, making profits. They used to watch me move them pets and stop. Now I watch moves in the NASDAQ crowd. Used to run from the ATF and them cops. Now I run down ETL, making profits. I jump out of bed, make profits. Eat my bacon and eggs, make profits. Light up, watching them candy, make profits. While I'm still in my sand, making profits. See, me and Jim Cramer been talking mad money. He said today I'm taking a risk. They got the feds coming, but I got support here with me. I call a short squeeze. You get the drop, she pull the trick, and abort these. If she stay on my watch list, I might have to wife her. But I know better. I'm a true trading group of life. Call up the Wolf of Weed Street. It's time to flip some profits. Go ahead, be hawking. Oh, for them. Get your spot here. I'll double top that, but in the head and shoulders. Hit them up with this resistance. Watch them roll over. Cause I see John Wicks in contract. If I say I make a million a day, well, that's a large cap. You moving average, that's why you get crossed Get split, get D-listed, and knocked off 
and I'm setting the whole block off. I'm buying gang stock and selling them Roblox off. I jump out of bed, make profits. Eat my bacon and egg, make profits. Light up, watching them damn make profits. While I'm still in my sand, making profits. They used to watch me move them packs. Stop. Now I watch moves in the NASDAQ. Used to run from the ATF and the cops. Now I run down ET hey, my make family. Profits. Hey, go, what we doing, my man? Hey, make profits. Hey, sure, Mike, what we doing? Hey, make profits. Yo, Wolf, Professor, what we doing? Hey, make profits. That TTG money game. Hey, make profits. We some snipers. Hey, yo. What's up, everybody? What's going on, folks? Welcome. Welcome to the True Training Group live stream. It's another day that ends in a Y. It's another day the markets make a new all-time high. My name is Michael Edward Paranati. I go by Michael Edward. I'm the co-founder <clears throat> and head trader of True Training Group. And in case you didn't know, we are a Benzinga FinTech Awards finalist for Best Data Analysis Tool. And we are also the fastest growing and highest rated premium online education platform that combines university-level trading and investing courses with premium stock market tools, live workshops, individual mentorship, and coaching on stocks, options, crypto, and futures. We day trade, we swing trade, we also cover long-term investing. There's literally something for everybody in True Trading Group, but we take that university level of curriculum and we pair it with eight full-time professional trading moderators that are with you each and every single day, sharing their screens, talking on the mic, providing their analysis, commentary, answering questions, and obviously giving you their real-time trade entries and exits. We're not just gone after an hour and you left to fend for yourself. You get access to all of the members of True Trading Group, the most educated, helpful, supportive, and successful community of traders that you're ever going to find, not to mention all the real-time trade alerts from the moderators and myself that have been able to collectively maintain a cumulative win rate on all of our executions of just around 80% now going on roughly the last four years. If you're wondering why I should listen to any of the stuff that I discuss on this channel, it's because I didn't figure this stuff out on my own. I began my career working at T3 Alpha Fund in New York City. It's my first job out of college. They had me go through an educational training program before they let me touch even $1 of the fund's money. Then 2008 happened. That was the Great Recession and the stock market crash, but it was also the same year I received one of the firm's Trader of the Year awards. Now, fast forward, I'm the co-founder and head trader of TTG, and along with my team of eight professional full-time trading mods and an over 30-person staff, we have helped thousands of members from all over the world to reach their goals. We actually have members in 115 different countries, truly a global community at True Trading Group. So if you are ready to learn, trade, and profit for real, you've come to the right place. Six nights a week, Sunday through Friday, we go live on this channel. For myself and other THD Mods, special guests. We had a great special guest last night. If you guys missed the live stream yesterday, I interviewed Steve Leesman, Senior Economics Reporter from CNBC. Go back and check out that live stream that is right here on this YouTube channel. Um, but you want to make sure you guys never miss out on these streams. So smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. Make sure you guys never miss out on any of these streams. Nice. Matthew Brown just got his laptop. Congratulations, Matthew Brown just got the laptop. Hi, guys. So today is another day where the markets make a new all-time highs. And, you know, today's price action, today's price action, um, was right what we were um i mean if you're not a member of true training you don't know this so um but every day inside of chat the moderators and i we go over with members you know what we expect from the markets we go over our watch list we talk about the individual stocks that we're focused on and we give entry prices exit prices so that members know exactly what we think is going to happen before the day even begins <clears throat> and today i told people very plainly that I believe we were going to have a very slow, low volatility type of day, kind of trade sideways. I said we could probably go up there and tap the new all-time high. We said 524 and a quarter to 524.50 and then pull back from there. It's exactly what happened, but just took took the last 30 minutes of the day for it to happen, which has been the case the last three trading days. Very odd price action the last couple of days. You've had sideways action and then direction into the close sideways action direction into the close then sideways action and then you finally get volatility into the close it's actually pretty strange pretty strange price action there i just think you know i i would i would probably um i would probably say that it's maybe just a a situation of just the markets are very content with where they're trading right now you haven't had any surprises in any economic data that's come out economic data today there was no surprises um there were you know, no surprises there. 
Um, no, so no surprises there for. Um, oh, okay, cool. So I got just responding some stuff here. Um, no surprise there that we're going to make the markets move, you know, any, anywhere significantly. And then you just have the end of the quarter. And sometimes you get these like end of the quarter adjustments in portfolios. I mean, you know, maybe that's part of the reason why you had some of that volatility going into the close where you just had, you know, orders that were that were in that are just readjusting portfolios for the end of the quarter. Um, and then those those orders not having not filled during the day because there really was no volatility, very low volume. Um, those orders needed to be filled before the close. And then the market makers have to get caught up with the rest of the day and the trade desks that have those order flows, whether they're coming from hedge funds or wherever they're coming from, they then have to go and then start executing those orders. And then you get that that movement into the close. And I feel like that's probably um, that's probably, you know, the reasoning behind um, the that like 30 minute window of volatility going into the close over the last couple of days but nonetheless we did go up there we did tap a brand new all-time high on the spy it is 524.61 and now you're starting to pull yourself back i actually do think that we're going to start off the second quarter um i think we're going to start off the second quarter with a red week i do think that this is a double top and i do think this double top is going to play itself out um going into next week so the markets are closed tomorrow um, there is no, you know, no trading tomorrow. You will have the PCE data comes out tomorrow morning. But I told people today in the pre-market session that I think that you'll double top. And then I think that you start and then I think you 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 pull it back from the double top. And But not a, I'm not looking for like this. Right? I'm not looking for anything crazy. But I just think that you're going to pull it back and then get back inside of this consolidation. So see this consolidation? I think you're going to drop back into, I think you're going to drop back into this consolidation. All right. So that's kind of what I'm looking at going into like for the next one to two weeks. I think it's more likely, and this is, you know, this is probably against popular opinion because we've been in such a strong uptrend, but I do think that we're going to, there's a greater chance that we kind of double top and pull back inside of this, of, of this zone um, and do something, you know, something that looks like this. I do think that this is more, more likely that you get this type of price action rather than the markets make a new all-time high and continue and you get to like 530 next week. Um, I don't believe that that is going to be the case. You see a lot of people, everyone's talking about, um, you know, this, this correction pullback. Everybody's talking about it, but nobody really necessarily knows when it's coming. Um, I know I'm sitting here trying to actually you know, make that type of prediction, but I have no problem doing that. You know, I, I, that's one thing about, about me and about, you know, the rest of true trading group is that I don't mind coming on these channels and I, I'm not a Monday morning quarterback. I come on and tell you, this is exactly what I think is going to happen. This is what I'm doing. This is the positions I'm in and everybody can go back and you can point to it and say, Hey, you know, yo, Mike, you were right. Or, Oh, Mike, Mike, you were wrong. I don't mind. I'm, I'm right. I'm not right all the time, but I'm right a hell of a lot more than I'm wrong. And I have no problem coming on telling you my thoughts. And Sunday night, Easter, Easter night, we're going to go live. Make sure you set your, your reminders. I'm going to give you guys my top trade ideas for the week. All right. Well, we would have had the PCE data, which, which comes out tomorrow. You got Jerome Powell is also speaking. Um, I think Jerome's he's speaking to, I think he's speaking tonight. Is there tonight or tomorrow? Jerome Powell speaking either tonight or tomorrow. Um, but we'll be able to go over what that PCE data was, what type of impacts that we think that we are are going to see. Um, I expect the PCE data tomorrow to be a little bit hot. I mean, why not, right? The PPI and the CPI numbers were hot. So I would anticipate the PCE number to be slightly hot as well. I just don't think that's going to scare the markets all that much. Unless that PCE number comes in like really high, then that might shake the markets up a little bit. But if it's just like a slightly hotter than expected, just like CPI and PPI was, I don't really think the markets react all that much to it because it's kind of expected. I think you would need to see a really hot number in order for, for the market to get shaken up. But I got to be honest with you guys. I really got to be honest. I, I, I know Jerome Powell came out um, last week and was like, ah, no, nah, we still think inflation's working its way to the downside. We still feel good about this. We still, we still feel good about inflation. I'm not so sure about that. Let me explain to you why I'm not so sure about that. Commodities are soaring. Oil, very quietly, 
is working its way back to last summer's highs. So oil has been steadily increasing for the last three months. Nobody's talking about it. All of our oil positions are starting to move higher again. OKE put in a new all-time high, right? Exxon Mobil is going back up towards its all-time high. And nobody's talking about how oil is beginning to move higher. Not only is oil moving higher, but you want to know what else is moving? Moving higher? Copper. Copper is breaking out to new highs. New highs on copper. Okay? New highs on copper. You have obviously the issue that was that's going on in the Strait of Hamus with um, everything that's going on over there and how that's affecting global trade and trade routes and how shipping containers are having to go different routes. And the price of those shipping containers is also on the rise, anyone that's in the shipping industry, because it is now taking a lot longer. They have to go further routes. They're using up more fuel. It costs more money to get shipping containers throughout the world. Now you have what happened with the port in Baltimore, which is closed. That is an extremely busy port. So what is that going to do then to shipping and shipping routes as well? So you potentially have two major disruptions when it comes to shipping routes that should continue to put pressure, upward pressure on shipping costs. If shipping costs go up and the cost of oil goes up, that means all prices go up. That would be bad for inflation. You had January numbers were hotter than expected. February numbers were hotter than expected. Then we had to listen to Jerome Powell come out and say, yeah, but I'm not really worried about it. I still feel good that inflation is on, is on a downward path. What happens though if March's inflation numbers are also high? What happens if March numbers are high? What happens if copper keeps going higher? What happens if oil keeps going higher? What happens if the cost of shipping containers keeps going higher? Right? Like what, what happens? What happens then? Is is really the you know something that I'm interested in seeing. What happens then? I mean, how could you at some point the Fed has to say, oh wait, crap. And I asked Steve Leesman about this yesterday. I asked Steve Leesman, um, and if you guys missed that interview, make sure you go back and check it out. It's right here on the YouTube channel. I said, Steve, what would cause the Fed to change their stance that inflation is on a downward path? Because Jerome Powell wasn't bothered, wasn't bothered by January and February. And you have to understand, you're not gonna, you're not just gonna get inflation, you're just gonna go straight down, right? You're gonna get these these bumps along the way, right? You're gonna get these like ups and downs, but it, but it is working its way to the downside. But if you get three months in a row, is that a bump in the road or is that, a, is, that the, is that the start of a trend? Because I'll make the argument that, sure, one or two months, bump in the road. Three months, that's a trend. You know what I mean? Like two is a crowd, three is a party. <laughs> like it's kind of what I – it's kind of how I how I'm I'm starting to look at this this whole inflation picture, and as I look around, there are upward inflationary pressures. GDP numbers three point two percent, not two point oh. The labor market's still pretty tight. You know, jobless claims today two hundred and ten thousand. That's nothing, lighter than expected. I think it was expected to be two fifteen or two twelve. Came in at two ten. So. Then you would also be getting earnings. So we start to think about it. People keep asking, they're like, Mike, what catalyst could cause a pullback? Because everyone's talking about this, about a correction. Now, a correction, by definition, is a 10% pullback. I don't think we get a 10% pullback. But I do think we get a pullback. But everyone keeps saying, well, what's the catalyst, though, for the pullback? Well, when we talk about what those potential catalysts are, I just gave you one. If March's inflation numbers that we'll get in April in the next couple of weeks, if that if those numbers are also higher than expected, then at some point the Fed is going to have to be like, oh, no. And there's no Fed meeting in April. So you're not going to have Jerome Powell in April coming out with a Fed speech and a Fed statement saying, yeah, we still expect three rate cuts. You know, we feel good. Inflation's on a downward path. The market's going to have to figure that stuff out on its own. 
And if you couple a third hot inflation report in a row with earnings reports that are anything like what you got from Lululemon or Nike, that's all you need. Nike had like had soft guidance, concerns about the consumer. Lululemon had soft guidance, concerns about the consumer. But then you have Restoration Hardware. Restoration Hardware up 17% today after earnings. Now, Restoration Hardware, I'll try to I'll try to say this as 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 low as I can so my wife can't hear me because I don't want her to even hear the words Restoration Hardware because I'll just get I'll just start getting notifications on my credit card that there's more and more pieces of furniture that are coming to my house. Restoration Hardware, their stuff is very expensive. Very nice, but very expensive. And if Restoration Hardware is saying, "Hey, we actually we actually think demand is going to rise. If we think demand is going to rise, well, then that directly contradicts what you just heard from Lululemon and from Nike. Directly contradicts what, what, what they said. And the housing market. The housing market is, is stagnant. It's stale. So if there's not a lot of people that are buying new homes or a lot of people, that, where is that demand for furniture coming from? I was very surprised to hear Restoration Hardware's earnings report yesterday. I was expecting, after Lululemon and Nike were soft on guidance, I expected a, 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 a company like Restoration Hardware, I would have thought their guidance would have been soft too. A, because the housing market has really, has really tightened up and slowed down and is really kind of stuck in the mud. But then if the consumer slowing down in general, well, then are they going to be spending you know, $5,000 on a coffee table or, or whatever the hell, you know, it costs at Restoration Hardware? I would have thought no. Well, that thought would have been completely dead wrong because they actually stocks up 17.5% and they actually said that they foresee strong demand going forward. Even in the face of this, they recognize the struggles in the real estate market or in the housing market, rather. They recognize the struggles in the housing market, but they still expect demand to to continue to increase. I was like, okay, okay. Well, that doesn't that didn't make a whole lot of sense because if people aren't willing to spend 120 bucks for leggings or 200 bucks for a pair of sneakers or 120 bucks for a hoodie like they would with Nike and Lululemon, then I just didn't think that they would spend three thousand dollars on a coffee table. But apparently, Restoration Hardware thinks that that's going to be the case going forward. Are they wrong, or is Lululemon and Nike wrong? Who's wrong? Who's I, I feel like they I feel like they both can't be right. I feel like Restoration Hardware can't be right about having strong demand going forward and Lululemon and Nike are wrong about having low demand going forward. I feel like one of them is going to be wrong. I feel like Restoration Hardware would be the one that would be wrong. But time will tell when they come out with their next earnings report. We'll see. Did they beat their guidance or did they miss their guidance? If they missed their guidance, well, then Restoration Hardware, you were wrong. They beat their guidance and they were right. But these are the potential catalysts that could cause a pullback. And a pullback would be extremely healthy. Extremely healthy. You know, we have been in this upward channel ever since. I mean, just look at this. I mean, that is a strong of an, of a, that's a strong of an uptrend as you could possibly have. Now, you might know what you're thinking. You're like, well, Mike. If that's a strong enough trend that you could possibly have, then why are you talking about a pullback? I'm talking about a pullback because I don't want people to be surprised when it happens. And I want people to be able to take advantage of because, listen, markets don't just go up in straight lines. We're up 28%, okay, off of um, – we're up 28% off of that October low. In five months for the markets to go 28% is insane, right? It's insane. It's just insane. So a pullback would be normal. A pullback would be healthy. And I do think that the catalysts that would come together to cause that pullback would be three things. One, a technical double top. This, this has the potential of a double top, right? It has the potential of that. We don't know if it's a double top yet. You know, to confirm that double top, you would need to break this trend line, right? You would need this. Right, you need this, and then and then and there, then you okay. There's double top, right? And that's what I that's why I think this plays itself out. 
I do. I, that's why I think this plays out. If, if listen, if, if come Monday, the market's at 526, I'm wrong. And I'll, I'll come back on the live stream on Monday night or Monday afternoon, evening, whatever. And I'll say, well, I was wrong. I was wrong about that. But I'm going to give you guys Sunday night my top trade ideas for the week. We'll see, you know, what futures are doing. And we'll we'll talk about, you know, how I plan on making money um, next week and what are the top five ideas that I have and how I'm going to position myself. But um, I think you could have technical double top. And I think if you get a hotter than expected inflation number for March, that'll be three in a row. I think the markets get concerned about three in a row and um, and then earnings. And then once earnings are coming out, if you get um, if you get soft guidance um, from earnings, I, I think that 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 combination of catalysts gives you a pullback to here. I think that combination gives you a pullback to there. That is such a beautiful spot for this market to, to pull back to. You know, 50-day moving average, prior highs. It's just such a great spot. It's such a healthy spot for a pullback and just like for a reset. It really, really is such a healthy spot. So that's that's the that's what I'm eyeing up. And I think we get there in April. So I think we get there in April. It's my birthday month. So let's have some fun. All right. So that, that's kind of my thoughts um, with regards to the overall market. Um, I got to tell you guys, you know, we were calling out the short on Reddit today. I think the stock is toast. Um, I do. I think Reddit is toast. The momentum has completely gotten sucked out of this thing. It's getting slaughtered even after hours. Sucks down 16 and a half percent. I don't think it's done either. So I feel bad, honestly, for the Reddit crowd because there's no way they sold. They sold. They, they, they just don't. There's no way that they sold. So, you know, when when Reddit IPO'd, I was, I was very cautious on Reddit and, and I have no intention on putting it in my long-term portfolio. The company's not been profitable in 19 years. I don't know how, I don't know what how they're going to become profitable or what the timetable is for them to become profitable. Um, I just, I, I envision there being issues down the road with the Reddit community and Reddit um, management. I don't think that those two sides are going to see eye to eye. And it goes to show you the day that Reddit started trading options, you saw the stock go crazy. And I think that there was a bit of a gamma squeeze, short squeeze there with the Reddit community coming on, piling in, buying far out of the money call options, pushing the price of the stock up, causing a short squeeze. And as soon as that happened, what took place? The CEO the CFO and the COO dumped tens and tens of millions of dollars in stock. That news broke today. The CEO sold about $44 million worth of stock. The CEO, uh, CFO, the COO, they also sold stock. And that news comes out today and the stock's down 17% right now. Man, that this stock had a chance to build momentum and that momentum has gotten completely sucked out of sucked out of this stock. And I think that this is not finished. I think that this IPO low breaks and I think you can see more downside on Reddit. Now, Reddit pro might give you a technical bounce off of 45, but any, any bounce off of 45, I think you try to short the bounce and then look for the break. Um, Breaks of 45. If you get a high volume break of 45, I think you got to try to be short this name. Is I think you're going to see Reddit into the 30s. Um, I, I think Reddit is going to be you know into the 30s within the next couple of weeks. Um, I thought you know I was surprised by that huge move in, up to 74, but then when I thought about it, I'm like, okay, that kind of makes sense. Like it just started trading option. The whole Reddit community comes in. They all buy buy call options. It causes a bit of a gamma squeeze, short squeeze. So I'm like, okay, from a from a technical standpoint of market function, I'm like, okay, that that move did kind of make sense. I didn't I didn't think about that at the time. So I've been bearish on Reddit, but then you got that move, and I was like, okay, I wasn't ready for that, but it makes sense, right? Like, and I I really feel good that that's what took place over those two days. But then now, 
with management dumping stock, and that's the problem with the way that this IPO was set up is that there, there's not the lockup period. So you can set up different IPOs differently, and whether you IPO or if it's direct listing or if it's a SPAC merger, there's, there's all these different different um, limitations that you can have on, on when insiders and people that participate pre-IPO, when they can sell stock. Reddit gave stock to moderators, they gave stock to users, They've obviously the, the the management team themselves did not have the six month lockup. Typically, you can't sell for six months. So if you were if you got pre IPO shares, you typically can't sell them for six months. Doesn't matter. The stock can go up a bajillion percent. You can't sell your shares for six months. That's typically the case. That was the case with Arm, right? When Arm when Arm went public, SoftBank and a lot of other funds could not sell shares until March 12th. Okay. That's part of the reason why you had a short squeeze on arm in the beginning of February, because their earnings were better than expected. There was a short position on the stock and there was just no supply out there because everybody was locked up and the stock just went absolutely bonkers. Reddit doesn't have that lockup. And I think maybe today people realize that when they saw that the management was selling and I, I just feel, listen, stocks like Reddit, stocks like DJT, these are purely momentum stocks. They're not, listen, Reddit didn't go from 46 to 74 because of fundamental reasons, right? DJT did not go from 35 to 80 because of fundamental reasons. These are just matters of technical market function with short positions, size of flow, and momentum. That is what is moving stocks like that. And Reddit, I just look at this stock and I just feel like the momentum has completely been sucked out of this name. If this thing reverses and goes back to like 68, I will be shocked. And again, I would come on this live stream and say, I was wrong. Stocks at 68. I do not see that being the case. You might get a technical bounce off of 45, but I'm telling you, I'm trying to short that bounce. I think this breaks 45. I think you see Reddit into the 30s. And I think this is a situation where this is an example of maybe a trade you can get into and hold for not just a day or two, but you might even be able to hold this for a week or two and try to get more downside, especially if you get a pullback in the overall market in April. Especially. So we'll talk about that. Um, Sunday, Reddit will be on my watch list. Okay. I'll actually write all here. I'll write it down right now for everybody. <laughs> okay. I'll write it down right now for the short, right? We'll go over exactly kind of where, you know, where we want to be looking for that, but that is something I'm going to be eyeing up, um, very, very much so, uh, tomorrow. All right. I mean, uh, next week, not tomorrow. Tomorrow the markets are close. All right. So. Folks, what we're going to do here is we're going to play a little game called Grade My Stock before we break. We're not going to spend too much time here today. I've got an accelerator uh, session with my members. We have I do these nine-week accelerator programs where I work very, very closely with a handful of our members. We have a session tonight at 6 o'clock Eastern time. So I do have to prep and I want to get ready for that. Um but uh, and I got to eat some dinner before I do that as well. But I wanted to come on here. I want to talk to you guys about the overall markets. We did make a new all-time high today. I want to tell you my thoughts on it. I want to tell you about that Reddit trade because that's something I'm, I'm eyeing up very much so. Um, but we're going to do a little session called Grade My Stock. Before we do a little session called Grade My Stock, I'm going to tell people that are on here that are not members of True Trading Group about how to join TTG. <clears throat> and you might be wondering... We care about joining True Trader Group. Why would I care? Why would I care? I don't want to, I don't got to pay for courses. I don't got to pay for trade alerts. You're just another, you know, another food guru on YouTube that is going to charge me for courses and get charge me for trade alerts. I don't think that you should listen to what I'm about to say because I think I'm the world's greatest trader. I don't think that I'm the world's greatest trader. It's not because I have a 100% win rate. I do not have a 100% win rate. The reason why I think that you should pay attention to the next few minutes of what I have to say is because our members are making money. And that's just the bottom line. And not just because I say that to be so, it's because our members say it so, and I'll prove it to you. Members, do me a favor and just type the number one if you guys are making money and you're becoming better traders with True Trading Group. Simple. Type the number one if you're making money and becoming better traders. Now, anyone that's on here that's not a member, 
or if you're maybe watching this live stream after it's already aired, just pay attention to how many people you see tech number one, because these are members, these are your friends, your family members, your coworkers, these are your peers. And if they can do it, then so can you. There is absolutely no reason why these people can be successful and make money and you cannot. You might think that it's because they all sit in front of their computer screens all day, every day, and they work from home. Wrong. 82% of our 10,000 members have full-time jobs. They work over 40 hours a week. You might think they're luckier than you. Nope. Luck has nothing to do with it. You might think they have more experience than you. Nope. Some of them joined to a training group never having traded an option contract a day in their lives. You might think that I've given them some special super top secret indicator that I learned working on Wall Street. You'd also be wrong. Every indicator that I use is something that you can all find in every single one of your charting programs that you use now. It's because they have access to a professional level of education. They have access to real trading and investing tools. And they're part of a community that generally gives a damn whether or not they succeed or fail. So the people that are not that are not members of your training group and are watching the stream, whether you're live with me now or you're watching it after the fact, if you are not yet a member, do yourself a favor and go to ttgoffer.com. And what you will see when you go to ttgoffer.com is what is included with our annual membership. The price says $1,212. However, I'm going to give you a coupon code for this holiday weekend. The coupon code is TTG121. You must manually type TTG121 into the coupon code box, click apply code. The price then drops from the 1212 down to just 609 for the whole entire year. Included in the 609 is our entire 22 course curriculum which is a simplified and expanded fund version of the training I received when I worked at the fund in New York. There's beginner courses, advanced courses, options, swing trading, trader psychology, crypto, you name it, we've got it. You have access to all of it for the 609. There's no VIP pro courses that cost another thousand bucks after you join. You're going to get access to our chat room. You're going to get access to our mobile app. So you can see the screen share, listen to the audio, get real time push notifications when our moderators enter and exit positions. You'll get access, obviously, obviously uh, access obviously to all the trade alerts. You'll get access to the video library that has over a thousand hours of workshops covering different topics. You'll also get the watch list every day from the mods and I, where we tell you the stocks we're focused on with entry and exit points. All of this is included when you join for the 609. And anyone that's still skeptical, like, oh, 609, here, do you a favor. We offer a double your money back guarantee when you join your trading group. I want to make sure that you are aware of it. So I want to erase any skepticism that you have. This is how it works. You join TTG now, you pay 609. You have the whole year to do the following. Go through our courses, pass our quizzes, attend one study group. Now, you can do those three things. You don't have to do them all in like 14 or 30 days. You have the whole year. So take your time, go at your own pace. If you do those things and are unable to make enough winning trades to equal the 609 membership fee, if you can't do that at least one time, we'll give you back 1,218 bucks. I'm dead serious. The double your money back guarantee. It's right there on the checkout page, ttgoffer.com. Go read it. It's real. It's in black and white. Go check it out. I can offer you guys double your money back simply because our refund rate, it's less than two and a half percent. Our retention rate, 78%. That means 78% of our members have either renewed their annual membership or they've gone on to upgrade to become a lifetime member of our community. We're nearly five-star rated with over 2,500 reviews. All you have to do is go to ttgoffer.com and use that code, TTG121. You have until Sunday at midnight before the price goes up. That coupon code, TTG121, will be valid until Sunday at midnight. So you can take advantage of it over the weekend. Do it now if you're live with me. You guys have until Sunday night at midnight. If you have any questions about anything at all, but you're having a hard time signing up or you have questions, concerns, whatever, Text us. We're fully transparent. We're an open book. The phone number is right there at the bottom of your screen. 1-888-306-8783. Again, 1-888-306-8783. We're going to welcome Karen. Karen just joined, newest member of the group. Everybody welcome Karen. Karen's the newest member. Welcome Karen to the fam. Welcome Karen. Everybody welcome Karen. Newest member of the group. So like I said, guys, 1-888-306-8783. Any questions, you text us. We'll be happy to answer and help you in any way that we can. All right? Excellent. Let's move on to grade my stock. This is a little segment that we do here on the YouTube channel where 
You get to give me a ticker symbol. I will then tell you what grade I give the stock. I will give it an A, B, C, D, or F. A means I love it. I buy it now. B means I like it. I'm holding it. C means I'm indifferent. D means I'd sell it. F means don't ever mention this ticker symbol to me ever again. All right. <laughs> so these are my opinions on these stocks. I will also share with you the reasons why I'm giving that stock a particular, that particular grade, whether it's a technical reason, a fundamental reason, a combination of the two. Okay. So let's go ahead and grade my stock. Lululemon, I see, just popped up. Lululemon. Lululemon for me. Listen, I like Lululemon. Lululemon for me. Um, I'm giving Lulu um, a B to a B plus. I like Lululemon. I think they have done a phenomenal job um, in expanding their, their customer base. Lululemon kind of started out as really just like, you know, yoga clothes and like really a woman's brand, but they have really done a great job of expanding and, and attracting more and more and more people to the men's side of their brand as well. I actually own a bunch of their, their men's clothes. I love their stuff. I got to be honest with you, their stuff is so comfortable. It's, you know, I, I like their stuff. Um, so I, I own a bunch of hoodies. I've got a couple of t-shirts. I've got like some of those pants, like, like, jogging pants or whatever, they, whatever you want to call them. I got a couple shorts that you can wear their shorts, either, you know, go out to golf with them or you can wear them to, a, you know, out to dinner on an island somewhere and look real nice and sharp. I mean, they're super comfortable. I love their stuff. So what I'm thinking here with Lululemon, I like it. I like the brand. I think that this company still has a long way to grow and especially on a global and international basis. I like the stock. You have such an amazing support level. At in like 280 to 300. I don't know if the stock gets back to here, but this is such a massive support level. You guys can see right there. If the stock ever gets back into that price zone, I think it's an automatic buy, but you also have a nice support level here around like this 360, 350. And I just think that this is a, a good company. It's a good brand. I like the expansion that they've been doing. Um, and I just, I like it. So I'm going to give that a, a B to a B plus. All right. PayPal. Um, uh, PayPal, I'm giving like a C, C minus. Um, and, and the reason why I'm giving, I can't wrap my head around why this stock has performed so incredibly poorly. Um, you know, at first I thought maybe like with the the introduction, the launch of the FedNow program, that maybe that was was an issue. Um, and it's funny because PayPal, like this stock got so destroyed in 2022 and it started in 2021 even. Like, I mean, this, this stock was $300 and this thing went all the way to 50 bucks and it's been going down just every year. I mean, it's actually green on the year in 2024 after just getting slaughtered in 21, in 22, and in 23. Three consecutive down years. And I mean big down years for Lululemon. Um, so, and I couldn't really wrap my head around why the stock was doing so incredibly poorly. Um, now, from a technical standpoint, you have you have this big downtrend that it looks like you're trying to kind of break out of, right? Like this, this, this little downtrend that you see here, you can see you're trying to kind of break out of that downtrend, but I just don't really know if I'm, I just don't know if I'm really buying it. Um, you know, I mean, you've got a lot of resistance levels up here. Like you got resistance at 68. You've got this big gap bill at 74. You got structure here at 78. Like I, I just don't think that this stock is going to be able to break through these resistance levels without some major fundamental change now there is a really good support level that's down here in the high 50s um you also have this golden cross that's coming up here the 50 day crossing over the 200 day so that's going to be the first time you've had a golden cross okay since 2020 so this will be your first golden cross since 2020 now golden crosses are bullish technical catalysts um and because of that 
Um, that that's kind of where why I'm giving this a C is just because from a tactical standpoint, maybe you get a little upside on the back of that golden cross, but it's not something that I am like eager to put in my long term portfolio and hold on to it, waiting for the stock to get back to like 200. Um, and if you ask me why the stock has done so poorly, I really honestly can't put my finger on a particular reason, a particular fundamental reason why they've done so poorly over the last three years. I know that, you know, there's, there's been a lot of, there's a lot of theories, right? There's a lot of like, oh, but this and this, and like, you know, a lot, but there really hasn't been like a concrete event or a concrete issue that people are like, that is why the stock has gone down, you know? Um, so I don't know. I'm going to give it a C because I don't necessarily like the fundamental story. I don't understand why it's done so poorly, but the technicals could be setting up for a little reversal. You know, like block, even blo blocks done poorly too. It's like the, the whole sector is done poorly. On Brendan says on on semi. I'm, well, we'll give we'll give on a uh, we'll give on a BB minus. Um, it hasn't performed anywhere nearly as as well as as the other semiconductors. So I am a little nervous about it. Um, you also have a head and shoulders pattern that's formed here. That's starting to form here on the the daily or the the weekly chart. You can see here's left shoulder. You would say here's you know head, and then you would say here's right shoulder, and then you kind of have like this little bit of a neckline right here, <clears throat> and it kind of looks like to me it looks like the stock kinda wants to do this and kind of drop down to sixty, and then I think sixty could be a decent spot. You'll have more structure support down there at sixty. I know it still looks like a head and shoulders with a neckline down there at 60, but then you have the 200 day moving average on the weekly coming in. And I feel like the stock could bounce from there. So I actually think that, you know, on probably is a little bit better in the low sixties than it is up here in the low seventies. Um, you know, the, not the type of semi semiconductor that is getting all the love, like a Broadcom, like an NVIDIA, like an AMD, like, you know, all of your AI, your high, your high AI driven names. Um, on is really not the same category as, um, as those. So like AMD, NVIDIA, Broadcom, I mean, those are A's, B pluses and A's for me. I own those names. I'm not necessarily buying them now at these prices. Um, but I do own them and I have no intention on selling them. MSOS. Ooh. As much as I would love to say something better about MSOS, these stocks aren't going to do a damn thing until there's actually something done about the law around cannabis. Now, what I will tell you is I do believe that something is coming. I do believe that some type of a regulation change is coming based on the way that these things are trading. You have seen way higher than average trading volume in the MSOS ETF than you have normally seen. Look at this volume. Look at the volume that's been taken. Look at the volume that's been coming into this ETF compared to all the way over here. Volume is really on the rise. Um, you're at like 52 week highs here. Um, so I actually do think that Behind the scenes, there, there's, there, there are things going on in the cannabis space. Um, and I do believe that regulation eventually is going to be changed. But I feel like until there's actually laws changed and regulation changed, the, the, these moves higher are not going to hold. Because it's just not – these companies are not able – to do business properly. They can't write off certain things on their taxes, like Cureleaf, for example. Cureleaf, for example, paid like an additional $70 million in taxes 
that if instead of selling cannabis, they sold sneakers, they would have been able to write, they would have been able to have written off like another 70 something million dollars in taxes. So that's an additional 70 something million dollars of just pure straight profit that would have come into the company's accounts. But instead, it had to go out the taxes. And that's not right. They can't bank properly. They don't have access to the same type of capital. They can't just go and get, you know, it's, it, they can't just go to a bank and get a loan. They can't use certain collateral. Like they're just restricted in the financing options available to them. They also cannot trade on a major exchange. I think it is the dumbest. It shows you just how stupid regulators are that you can have Canadian cannabis companies list on a major stock exchange, but not a U.S. cannabis company. It is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So Cureleaf, okay, Cureleaf, which is a multi-state operator, has to trade on the OTC. But Canopy Growth, which is a piece of garbage, and Tilray, which is a piece of garbage, they get to trade on the on, on a main exchange. They don't have to trade on, on the OTC. But Cure Leaf has to trade on the OTC. And when you trade on the OTC, you do not have the same exposure with hedge funds, institutional investors. JP Morgan, it, I can't even JP Morgan. So I have like my long-term portfolio stuff with JP Morgan. I can't even buy Cure Leaf at JP Morgan if I wanted to. They don't let me. I used to have shares at JP Morgan of Cure Leaf. And then they they came out with a whole change of JP Morgan. They said, oh, we're not allowing any, any securities or any equities are, that involve anything to do with cannabis. So you have to you have to either sell them or you got to transfer them out to another another place. What? I can't even buy Cure Leaf at JP Morgan if I wanted to. That's insane. So like that has to change. It has to change. It eventually will change. I really do believe eventually things will change, but I do not know when our government is going to make those necessary law and regulation changes for these companies. But I'm telling you, the day that that happens and Cure Leaf is allowed to list on the New York Stock Exchange and they're allowed to do their taxes like a normal company and they have access to capital at normal interest rates like normal companies, I think Cure Leaf is a $20 plus stock. That's what I think. But until then, these stocks are fighting an upward battle. So I believe in the future of these companies, but the performance of the stock, it's not based on the company's execution. It's based on government regulation. So, so for that, I guess, wait, did I give it a grade? I don't think I give it a grade. I guess I'll give it a C. I guess I'll give it a C. We'll give that a C. All right, guys. We'll take uh, we'll take one more. Yeah, Cureleaf. I think Cureleaf. I think I think they do like a billion dollars a year in revenue. I, I, I'm pretty sure. I haven't checked their any of their last earnings reports, but I don't know if the earnings have gone up, gone down. But I know last year that they 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 cracked a billion dollars in sales. That's that's not a small company. You know, and the stock is trading where it was in, you know, 2020 when they didn't have it, you know, they, they had their sales were a, a couple hundred million, you know, now they're doing a billion and the stock's at the same place. So this rally that you saw at the end of 2020, so let me explain this to you guys. What happened here at the end of 2020 was everybody bought all the cannabis stocks because everybody thought that. Um, a Democrat controlled House, Senate, and White House was going to that. So see MSOS, see how it just went absolutely bonkers the end of 2020. So going into 2020, going into the, you know, it happened right here in very early November, which, and what happened in November of 2020, the election, right? So once it became clear that it was a Democrat controlled House, Senate, White House, everybody said, okay, this is it. This is it. We're finally going to get regulation on cannabis. 
This is going to be it. We're going to get regulation on cannabis. If, if there's ever been a time for it to happen, it's going to be now. And everybody bought all these cannabis stocks. You can see MSOS went from $24 to 58, or I'm sorry, 56, right? From 24 to 56 on the back of that, the ETF did. And then 2021 came around and it slowly became, people started slowly to realize that nobody gave a rat's ass about cannabis. It was COVID, 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 COVID. Nobody cared about cannabis. And without that institutional support, retail traders and retail investors get very tired and they just start to sell their positions. And, and, and they just went down, down, down as no regulation was changed. No laws were changed. Nothing changed for the cannabis industry. Nothing changed. And that was disappointing for cannabis, you know, bulls and people that were hopeful for cannabis regulation. So that's that's why this ETF has gotten slaughtered, um, because it got front ran hard with the anticipation of of something happening. And when it when it became the realization of, oh, no, oh, no, nothing is going to happen regarding cannabis, the stock sold off, and they sold off hard. And, and that's how we got, that's how we got to where we are today. But the potential is there. These are, these are good companies. And I think the potential for them is there. All right. One more guys, Fernando, what's up, brother? I see you, Levi Strauss. Let's hit on Levi. I actually like Levi. Um, I like Levi Strauss. I think that the, the brand has, has, is doing a pretty good job of like kind of coming back. I feel like Levi Strauss kind of like fell off a little bit and I feel like they're doing a nice job of coming back. From a technical standpoint, you've got a big resistance level here at 20 bucks. If you can get through 20 bucks, it should be pretty good to move to 24. You have a nice little rounded bottom kind of taking place here. And I like the idea of if like a company like Lululemon is like, ah, I'm a little worried about the consumer, Levi, a cheaper option, a cheaper alternative to something like an Abercrombie or a Lululemon or whatever right? Or like seven jeans or, you know, those are more expensive brands. Levi, good quality clothes at a cheaper price. And they're doing a good job of kind of bringing that brand back. And I actually think that I'm going to give Levi a B. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a B. I'm going to give this a B. I feel like it's um, where a, a cost conscious consumer would have no problem going and buying some Levi's, um, you know, products as opposed to, you know, something in the hundred to $150 price range. So I actually think that Levi is, is, is pretty, pretty solid and I'm going to give it a B. All right. So there we have it guys. That sums up, that wraps things up for me. I got to go, I'm going to eat some dinner. I got to get ready for my accelerator that I'm going to be working with my members at 6 PM Eastern Mem member, all my accelerator members, 6 PM inside of the study hall. We're going to get into tonight's session of my accelerator. Hope you guys enjoyed this session. I appreciate it. Enjoy the weekend. Remember the markets are closed tomorrow. Happy Easter to those that celebrate. I do Easter for me. I'll see my family on Sunday, maybe get around the golf in this weekend. So I'll see you guys all later. Have a wonderful rest of your night. If you guys have not yet done so go to ttgoffer.com. Use that coupon code TTG121. Click apply code. The price drops all the way down to 609. You have any questions, just text us 1-888- 306-8783. Don't forget, you have the double your money back guarantee. I don't think you need it, but it's there for peace of mind. Just shows you how confident we are in the platform that we've created. I'll see you guys all later. Subscribe, uh, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, turn on your notifications.